put it across the world. This is our part two of the deliverance. This is probably the most difficult part of deliverance that I see because there are some things that we need to be delivered from. And that's why we call it deliverance because we're bound by those things. Luke 10, 22, again, I want to read the introduction. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. All I've got to say about the deliverance I'm going to be preaching on now is that we have seen a lot of movies come out and talking about Star Wars and the Terminator and all these kind of weird things as they think would be wonderful to see and how that they would fight the evil dark force and Darth Vader and all this kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. There's something that reaches out to the universe that will be a war that God will prevail in in which one third of the angels that were fallen that become the demons of this earth will be in a fight against the angels of heaven and against the Lord and his Christ. And we'll see a deliverance from that true evil one day. But it won't be a Star Wars movie. It won't be something fabricated in somebody's mind or imagination. This is a real thing coming to pass in this world. And people live as if they enjoy Star Wars, but they won't enjoy what's coming on this world once Jesus is taken out of it. Let's look at what happens to a world without Jesus. This is the great famine, Amos 8, 2. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament. And he said unto Amos, What seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel, and I will not again pass by them any more. The songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat? making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by excellency of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this? And every one mourn when dwelt the mourn that dwelleth therein, and it shall rise up holy as a flood. It shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, and I will turn your feasts into mourning, and your all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up the sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, 
but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. I preach from this message and this set of scriptures many times, but I never thought about what it was really saying. This is talking about a great famine where the word of God is taken out of the earth, where there is no more word of God preached in any place, where there is no one to care anymore. There is no one that regards values of things. They sell things just to get another nickel of profit. And they can't wait to sell. And they can't wait to buy things cheap. But things will not have their proper value anymore. And think about it. When the Lord takes his people out of this earth, What's going to be left behind? Nothing but darkness and evil. Every time somebody wants to do a good deed, that thought will flee away from them. They won't want to do a good deed. It's going to be nothing but growling and wrestling around for everything you get. You talk about a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Now we can laugh about the movies we see on TV and we can think it's a, a fun thing to watch the horror shows of this world, but this world has not seen horror like it's going to see in that day. That's going to be a terrible day. What can we do to prepare for that day that we're not here to suffer in it? We can turn to Jesus. Amen. Live for the Lord. Study His Word. Care about each other. You know why it's so important that we love each other? Because that's being like God. That's being the hand of the Lord extended. Oh, to be His hand extended, reaching out to the oppressed. <laughs> Let me touch Him. Let me touch Jesus. In that day, there won't be anybody trying to be the hand of Jesus. There'll be no way to touch Jesus if you're left behind. There'll be no way to buy and sell without taking the mark of the beast. And after that day, when the Lord comes back and gathers his people all out, then that's going to turn even worse. The wrath of God is coming down on this world. And people don't want to hear about the wrath of God. They say God is love, but with that God being love, he's also righteous. He's a righteous God. And in his indignation, he's still going to be righteous. Why don't we hear more of this today? People telling us about we need to serve God. In our country, we just had an election. And what it looks like in that election... We were trying to determine which would be the worst for us. And it looks like we voted the worst in. And there's no spiritual or more moral guidance to what we've done. And people love it that way. The majority of the people voted in this kind of stuff. And that means we're turning darker and away from God more and more. There are some people that hate anybody preaching or even hearing the word of God. They say you're an offense to them and you're violating their rights because you don't think they're as good as anybody else. It's not a matter of us thinking who's good and who's not good. It's a matter of what God thinks. And those he writes their name in the Lamb's book of life. That's the key. Wonder why today in this world of knowledge that we have, in such technology, people don't preach the truth of God's Word and help us understand the danger that's out beyond America falling, beyond the world of being in a world war, when the world is without Jesus. It's going to be a terrible place. Just wanted you to think about that great famine. That's why we need this deliverance. That's why we need Jesus. Amen.
We'll go to our third segment in just a minute. <coughs> Turn off this camera. Thank you. 